the United States and other like-minded nations find themselves directly opposed by a regime with contrary aims and a totally different concept of life. That regime adheres to a false philosophy which purports to offer freedom, security, and greater opportunity to mankind. Misled by that philosophy, many peoples have sacrificed their liberties only to learn to their sorrow that deceit and mockery, poverty and tyranny are their reward. That false philosophy is communism. It's time for Radical Truth with Tony Gurley. It's 2021 and the Islamists are still hard at work in America. But you, like many other people, may have been more distracted recently or more focused on the fascism, socialism, and communism that is going around. Now, if you're thinking, I've been waiting for new episodes, Tony, where have you been? I've missed you. All I can say is, thank you. (laughs) I've missed you as well. We've been super busy working on a number of different projects, one of which is our website, RadicalTruth.net. If you haven't been there yet, please check it out. Share it with other people as well. Folks, that is our main platform. That is the one place that we have control over. Unlike the social media out there and all the shadow banning and everything else that's going on, go to RadicalTruth.net and you will find the social media platforms that we're on because it will give you the icons at the top. You also have the main menu, which lets you have access to all the stuff that we have on the website. We have more articles on there now, more free resources. We have our own Radical Truth resources on there now new stories, and we're still adding more stuff there, but ultimately there's going to be more stuff, more news on the website than you'll even find on social media. So again, RadicalTruth.net is the place to go. Also, simply because of the fact that it is a worldwide topic, if you want to get the latest news stories on the Rona that you will not find in the mainstream media, underneath our rotating banner on the homepage, you'll see a world. Uh, Rona, that's a, that's a, a substitute word here <laughs> for the sake of the show, uh, World Rona uh, Updates. And basically, this is a news ticker that is pulling news from all different news sources. Again, none of the mainstream media uh, at all in there. So that's a place to go to get the latest news on that. And again, we have the new articles, new news stories coming up all the time as well. So the second to last episode was called Make Churches Full again. And that episode was B-A-N-N-E-D on YouTube less than 10 minutes after it was uploaded. So in this follow-up episode called Keep Churches Full, we are going to be substituting some words out and maybe spelling some words here and there to see how things go. Now, if you are a listener to the podcast or a viewer on BitChute, this is probably just pure entertainment for you. But for the YouTube audience and for the sake of wanting to keep it on YouTube, we're going to do some substitutionary words and again, spell some stuff here and there. So please bear with me. And they're going to be pretty obvious uh, substitutionary words. And of course, if it's spelled, then it's spelled. So, it was called Make Churches Full Again, and everyone's going to bit shoot pretty much other than the podcast because the YouTube was B-A-N-N-E-D. And this episode could be called Trying Not to Get B-A-N-N-E-D Again, but it is Keep Churches Full because that is exactly what we need to do. Now, let me qualify that because if any churches, quote unquote, out there who were never preaching the gospel to begin with, well, you can go ahead and just stay closed. <laughs> there's, there's no reason to reopen. But if the church that you were attending was a place where the full gospel was preached and your pastor uh, was a faithful minister of God's word, uh, preaching the things that we like, preaching the things that we don't like, the wholeness of God's word, sin, righteousness, and judgment, which, hey, no one wants to be punished for uh, sins they've committed, but guess what? God is a holy God. He's going to punish lawbreakers wherever they're found, but amazingly, God's grace is amazing and he is merciful and he will forgive those who repent and put their trust in Christ because of his sinless life, death and resurrection, but it's not an automatic thing. Just because you believe in Jesus doesn't mean that you are saved. Even demons believe and they tremble. It is, have you repented, turned from your sins and put your trust in Jesus Christ. 
But folks, that is the main solution here. It doesn't matter if we're talking about what's happening throughout the world because of the Rona, or we're talking about the lie of the Islamic worldview and Islamic theology, and the goal of Islam being worldwide Sharia, and the creeping Sharia in the West. The gospel is a solution to all of it, because the gospel is the only thing that can actually regenerate a heart and renew a mind and actually change a person's worldview to where they hate what they once loved and love what they once hated. And even if every immoral, sinful thing in the world is completely legal, well, if no one has a desire to do it, it's not going to happen. So the gospel is the ultimate solution because that can actually regenerate a person, unlike the lie of Islam and unlike the lie of all the other man-made religions and theological cults out there. So, as I said at the very beginning, the Islamization does continue, and if you didn't hear or read about this news story, did you know that 60 out of 170 Muslims who ran for office this year won their races? Now, some of you will be thinking, yeah, but hey, 110 lost. Folks, you don't just need to look at who won and who lost, but also look at the percentage of what the Muslim received and what the other person opponent received. What was the difference there? I mean, if the Islamist lost by 1%, well, what's going to keep them from getting 2% more next time and winning the race? Again, it's about getting people educated about the lie of Islam and not just why it's a lie, but why Christianity is true. Because even in countries where it's under Sharia, you have many people leaving Islam because they are hearing the gospel. They are getting Bibles one way or another. And they're realizing that Jesus is true, that the gospel is true, that the Jesus of the Bible is not the Isa of the Quran, and that Islam is a lie. So many people are just going with the flow under Sharia for the sake of not being called an apostate and being punished, but they know it's not true. They know it's not right. I mean, look at all the archaeological evidence that's coming out now proving that Islam is false. But yet, again, it, it hasn't changed the agenda or the goal of the Islamists who are still Muslims, who are still believing the lie of Islam, and still wanting you to believe the lie of Islam as well. So, obviously, this is an ongoing topic until uh, the 1.6 billion Muslims throughout the world have either left Islam and become Christians, or have just left Islam because they have realized that it's a lie. But Right now, even Islamists throughout the world are having to deal with the Rona and everything that's coming along with that. Here in America, and I know we have a lot of international viewers and a lot of people listening to the podcast, over 40 countries now, uh, we have people who have downloaded the podcast. So thank you so much and continue to leave positive feedback and download and share them with other people. But here are some of the news stories that really have been no surprise to people who've been really paying attention and looking outside the mainstream media for months now. Okay. And again, we're going to need some substitutionary words here. Number one, this, this article here, an hour after um, the hair sniffer is sworn in, who, that's WHO, World Health Organization, admits their testing grossly overstates individuals testing positive for the Rona. That's our substitutionary words there. Here, next, we have right on cue for the hair sniffer, who admits high cycle PCR tests produce Rona false positives? What a coincidence. Washington, D.C. mayor lifts indoor dining ban two days after the hair sniffer inauguration. We have here surprise Gretchen Whitmer reopens Michigan restaurants now that the hair sniffer has been sworn in. And the numbers are in. Cuomo's draconian lockdowns cost New York 1 million jobs. And yes, the after effects of just the lockdown in general continue to destroy lives. And that's one more reason why we just all need to be educated about what is going on here. Governor Newsom to lift stay at home order less than a week after hair sniffer inauguration. Now, not surprisingly, after, from what I heard over in California, they have like over 1.2 million people have signed their names or whatever you need to do to recall uh, the governor here. 
And it seems like the more signatures come in, the more lenient he gets. You know, it goes from uh, lockdown to uh, partially reopen to, okay, fully reopen. You know, the, the more signatures, the, the more freedom you get back kind of thing. Uh, at least that's what's happening so far. And here, Carlsbad, California says no more to lockdowns. May it be a national model. This article says, It's been said off and on over the decades that California is a bellwether of sorts. What happens there is a preview of what's going to happen elsewhere in the U.S. In the late 1970s, the passage of Proposition 13 foretold a national tax revolt. Californians used a referendum to limit the tax power of grasping politicians in the Golden State, and the pushback eventually went national. A different, more local revolt began last weekend in Carlsbad, California a town just north of San Diego. Its restaurant and bar owners decided that they weren't going to take it anymore. There's no longer going to allow witless politicians to destroy what they've worked so long to build. They're going to open their businesses to eager customers. And of course, that is what needs to happen everywhere. And yes, if it can happen in California, it can happen in any state, in Texas, in Florida, uh, wherever. And of course, we've seen that the lockdowns don't work. The places with the most strict lockdowns seem to have the most deaths, quote unquote, as well. So over in communist China, we see here, in communist China, a practice, practicing a certain faith, printing or even reading religious books could result in prison terms and abuse. Spiritual believers in China, be it Christians, Buddhists, Uyghur Muslims, or Falun Gong practitioners, are faced not only with brutal suppression or forced labor terms, but also have their religious books burned or, the tra or trashed at the hands of the Chinese Communist Party. The coercive policies are aimed at forcing these religious followers to renounce their faith and follow the communist ideologies based on atheism and Marxism. No surprise there. A preacher in China said, It is the work of the devil. The situation is becoming increasingly dire. The government, the CCP, is increasing pressure step by step. In the end, they want to eliminate religious belief completely. Now, folks, this is what we see under full communism, and we're seeing creeping communism throughout different places in the world. And as Lenin said, the goal of socialism is communism, and how many people here in the West are pushing for socialism? Now, if socialism is so great, why don't people in the West travel to countries under socialism and get some on-video interviews of people who live there just dying to tell people <laughs> no pun intended telling people in the west how great socialism is i mean wouldn't that be an easy sell to anyone you're trying to convince about anything get some interviews of people who've already experienced it who are living under it right now but guess what they can't do that because everyone who's come to the west to escape socialism and or communism let you know how bad it is and how you should never let it come to America, and how they would never want to go back to where they came from. And of course, people who are living under those things right now are going to tell you, hey, I want to come to America because I want your American freedom that we don't have. Folks, if you don't know what life is like in other countries where you do not have a constitution and bill of rights, you're going to take for granted the constitution and bill of rights. You're not going to protect it as much as you would if you lived under socialism or communism and then for the first time came to a country who had a constitution and bill of rights after the break we're going to get more into that and get more of this news roll of things that are happening throughout the world radical truth media presents understanding islam now available on a five dvd set and resource disc 20 hours of apologetics training covering introduction to apologetics to islam the Christian and the Great Commission, Islam 101, Basic Beliefs and Practices, Christianity and Islam's Theological Differences, Jihad and Muhammad, The Authority of the Bible versus the Quran, Women under Islam, Answering Objections, Sharing the Gospel with Muslims, Do's and Don'ts of Muslim Evangelism, this is one of the very best so far, especially in the way the material is organized, the relevance, and the clear presentation of the Islamic worldview and mindset. Radical Truth presents Understanding Islam, featuring Joe Carey, 
founder of Radical Truth. For more information, visit www.radicaltruth.net. Want to give your church an introduction to Islam to know why Muslims do what they do? Want to let them know why the God of Islam is not the true God of the Bible? Want to give them some tips on reaching Muslims with the Gospel? A new, highly visual sermon presentation is now available for churches everywhere. What is Islam? Who is Allah? And what is the Christian response will help educate and equip your church to engage their Muslim neighbors, co-workers, and classmates with the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. To inquire about booking your event, email info at RadicalTruth.net. As a 501c3 Christian ministry, Radical Truth is dependent upon God to provide our monthly financial support, and He provides through people like you who realize the need for this vital work. Your regular prayers and monthly financial gifts allow us to continue our full-time effort to equip the body of Christ with the training necessary to effectively engage Muslims with the gospel of Jesus Christ. At Radical Truth, we proclaim the truth, share the gospel, and expose Islam. Please partner with us by visiting RadicalTruth.net and making a tax-deductible donation. That's RadicalTruth.net. Muslims have no assurance of their salvation. There's only one exception to that. There's one way that a Muslim can know that they can bypass the Day of Judgment and be ushered into Paradise immediately by shedding their own blood. Has your God done anything that measures up to what He required Abraham to do to test His love? You see, if the test of man's love and devotion to God is being willing to sacrifice His only Son, then there's only one way, my Muslim friend, that God can demonstrate His love to you. You don't find the answer in the Quran. You find it in the Bible. But God loved us in that while we were still sinners, what? Christ died for us. This is Radical Truth with Tony Gurley. Before the break, I was talking to you about China and what life is like under full communism. Now, here in America, we, we need to take a few steps back. You know, we, we can see where certain people want to take us. But right now is the time to be warned about what life could become like. And look at what's happening around us as you see this creep, not only creeping Sharia, but you see creeping communism and uh, creeping socialism. You don't even need creeping fascism. That's pretty much already here. If you know what's going on with that, with big tech and everything else. Right here, medical tyranny. CDC announces all travelers must wear two masks. <laughs> Threatens arrest. The CDC announced on an order late Friday that will require people to wear a face mask while using any form of public transportation, including buses, trains, taxis, airplanes, boats, subways, or rideshare vehicles while traveling into, within, and out of the U.S. Now, interesting part, if you watched Make Churches Full Again, you learn how effective or maybe ineffective masks really are. But I don't want to get back on that. We have a lot of new content here. Now, uh, uh, Fraud Chi <laughs> says, uh, wearing two masks is better than one. I mean, he might, he's might as well just come out and say, wearing ten masks is more effective than wearing nine. But that's probably something he's going to say, you know, later on. Uh, but uh, yeah, two masks is more effective than one, but effective at what? <laughs> effective at cutting off your how much more of your oxygen. But someone else is ahead of him here, because we have here, D a doctor tells NBC, Americans should consider wearing four face masks. Okay, this is how ridiculous it ha has now become. We have here a, a miracle. Only 23 Americans tested positive for flu last week compared to 14,657 cases reported last year at the same time. Here's what this article says. Do you ever get the feeling you're being lied to? 450,390 people have now died with the Rona. Now, not from the Rona, with the Rona in the U.S. this year. That number includes poisonings, shootings, homicides, and hospice deaths. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, there's a lot more money to be made uh, treating the Rona or dying from or with the Rona than if you die from the flu or with the flu. So no surprise here. Now we need to look again, at, and this is a a, a map from CNN. Uh, and I, I know someone, believe it or not, who actually thinks that CNN is like the gold standard of news. Okay, the the only p thing this person's missing is is pretty much a paycheck. Because other than that, they're pretty much a unpaid shill for CNN. And if you if you look at the CNN numbers here, look at this. We have 25 million cases. We have 421,000. 
129 deaths. Again, that sounds like a lot, and it's unfortunate if, any, if anyone dies from any type of illness whatsoever. But folks, let's do some math, and even more math than we did in Make Churches Full Again. If you take 421,129, and that's the deaths, quote-unquote, divide it by the 25,297,071 cases, that is 0 0.0166. Now, if you take 0 0.0166 and you times that by 100, you get 1.66%. Now, let's just round that up to 1.7. Okay, so that means that with no... Uh, liquid in your arm without getting an injection, you have a 98.3% chance of survival, okay, with no liquid in your arm at all. Now, here's the thing. Let's add on this new story. CDC says comorbidities, or in other words, pre-existing conditions, present in 94% of COVID deaths. Folks, do you, know, do you realize what that means? That means that only... 6% of the deaths in general are actually from the Rona itself. Now, that needs to be factored in here because guess what happens when you take the 421,129 deaths and then you subtract 94% of those deaths, of which were people who had pre-existing conditions. That subtracts 395,861.26 deaths. That leaves 25,267.74 deaths. Okay, let's round it up to 268. 25,268, okay? Now you divide that number by the cases, and now you have 0 0.00099 times that by 100. That's 0 0.099 death rate. Now that means that if you do not have a pre-existing condition, your survival rate, if you get the Rona, is 99.99%. Now, there's this injection that a lot of many, that many people are talking about here. You have a 99.99% chance of survival with nothing, right? Now they say, oh, uh, this liquid that we can put in your arm is 96% effective. But 96% effective at doing what? Now, if it's 96% effective at saving your life, well, it's only 96% effective at gaining you 0.01% more survival rate than your God-given 99.99% survival rate, even if you don't have any liquid in your arm. So, this stuff needs to be thought about. I mean, this is simple math, okay? This is simple multiplication, division, addition, <laughs> subtraction. Everyone should be able to figure this stuff out, but the mainstream media is not giving it to you. And look at this. Uh, liquefied congressman tests positive for the Rona. Now, he tested positive after receiving both doses of the Rona uh, liquid. But don't let that surprise you, because let's look at this new story. Austrian lawmaker tests Coca-Cola for the Rona infection before his colleagues and drink tests positive. Yes, Austrian FPO lawmaker Michael Schnidl Schnidlitz, Schnidlitz administered a Rona PCR test to a glass of Coca-Cola during a session of parliament earlier this month. The soft drink unfortunately tested positive for the Rona. Okay. <laughs> the largest experiment on humans ever seen. That's the name of this article. Which is the more reasonable approach a society might take in the outbreak of epidemic? Number one, to quarantine the sick and take reasonable precautions to stop those who are identified as vulnerable from contracting the illness. Or two, attempt to control the virus by preventing millions of healthy people from having contact with other healthy people. To any society prior to 2020, it would have been obvious that the first approach is not only logical and proportionate, but the one least likely to have other unintended and highly destructive consequences. However, to my continued astonishment, many in our society not only believe that the answer is the second, but they somehow believe it to be based on established science. Now, if you want to talk about a real tragedy, how about this? Twice as many people condemn plastic straws than abortion. 
That's a tragedy. Global abortions surpass 1.1 million in the first 10 days of the new year. That's a tragedy. Now, I have to give credit where it's due. Let me give you these new stories first. Pope says abortion is white glove equivalent to Nazi crimes. In 2019, he said, uh, Pope says here, Pope Francis compares having an abortion to hiring a hitman. Now, again, I have to give credit where it is due. Now, I know I've talked about the Pope and Islam. That's That was a, a, a past episode. Uh, yes, he's a shill for Islam. He's a shill for the fake refugees. But when it comes to abortion, he's spot on. I mean, this is the most re- reasonable, logical thing that this Pope uh, has said, pretty much, that having abortion is equivalent to hiring a hitman. Now, it's not just the unborn who are dying. This new story, Las Vegas schools forced to reopen amid a rash of student suicides. Folks, all these new stories that are coming out now that are helping people wake up and realize what's going on, that aside doesn't change the fact that thousands, millions of lives have been destroyed. People who had businesses, they spent their entire life or adult life at least uh, forming, creating, building up, got destroyed. And the more news stories that come out that let us know what's really happening make this, uh, number one, more and more unfortunate, but of course, they're making people more and more upset of, of what is going on and what has caused this. Folks, people need hope. And not only do they need hope, but they need to remember that, as it says here in this news story, there is no pandemic exception to the Constitution of the United States or the Free Exercise Clause of the First Amendment. John MacArthur's church never shut down. They have no plan to shut down. They're not going to shut down. Folks, if you don't want to attend church, then watch the live stream. But guess what? If the church is shut down, then not even a live stream is happening. It needs to at least have a live stream, if nothing else. But more importantly, be the church. Be open. If people feel healthy, if they don't want to wear a mask, or if they or if they live in a place where you don't have to wear a mask, let people go to your church who want to go to your church. If people want to stay home, let them stay home. If people want to wear a mask, let them wear a mask. But be the church. The church does not only have to be open, they need to be full again. And more so than that, this follow-up pleading with you to keep churches full. That's the ultimate solution here. Because like I said, and make churches full again, the dichotomy of what's happening is, is either this is the worst disease in the history of the world or it's the greatest hoax in the history of the world. And I know many of you hold a belief that falls somewhere in between that dichotomy. But let's just say that it's one or the other. Either way, the gospel needs to be preached. We can't let people die in their sins, even if they have a disease. And at the same time, if it's the greatest hoax, and this is satanic, it's totalitarian, it's dictatorial, and guess what? The more days, weeks, and months go by, you are realizing that more and more. The gospel is the ultimate solution. The gospel is what needs to be shared. Open up your church. Let your church be full and go out and share the gospel with those who need to know and understand it. And we'll talk with you next time and see you next time on Radical Truth.